Hello everyone, it's Pink Giraffe and I'm here with a playthrough of Kazat Beasts. A quick introduction for those who don't know me, I am a monster tamer at heart, I've played Monster Sanctuary, Tam Tam, Coromon, I've dabbled the next one, so I've, I'm experienced with these kind of games. I'm excited to play Kazat Beasts and the videos will be formatted a little different than my usual Let's Plays, I will edit the videos much shorter because I'm doing a voiceover instead after to make them more polished. So having said that, let's get started. I started the game with a little harder and smarter AI because I enjoy a challenge and we land in Harbor Town with our neon green visor because fashion. A traffic crap sneaks behind us and Kaylee hands us a cassette player. And we choose the can devil's tape because, you know, I say sweet, not spooky. And guess what? We transform ourselves into the monster. Yeah, so it's not like other games where you capture the monsters. No, you become the monsters. We have a little cute fight with the traffic crab. And after that, Kaylee sits down and explains to us about the different people from the different worlds that appear in New World. Which, if you say it out loud, New World, it sounds like a New World, so I'm gonna kind of play on that a bit. New World. It's a big mystery because nobody knows how or why we come into this world, but it seems like we cannot go back. The most exciting thing that happens is that Kaylee tells us to change our outfit because we're out of fashion and I pick this outfit which is like a neon Velma because who doesn't love Velma and it's pink and green, I love it. After we say hello to a couple of town members, we head east where Kaylee awaits us at the gates because she's a ranger and she's going out on patrol and she's gonna teach us a couple of things because we are accompanying her. In battle she explains about the AP points which is a great alternative to the PP and stamina systems in other games. And look at this, the monsters have a green health bar but the tamers, the trainers, we also have a red health bar underneath it which is very interesting and I love it, it's a unique system to say the least. After the battle, we come across a bonfire pit. Now, bonfire pits are amazing because you can rest and manage your party at these locations without having to travel all the way back to Harbor Town's cafe. And there are a lot of bonfire pits across the area. I think they're well spaced, so I like it. Now, as we're traveling around, Kaylee points us at this Dominoth creature. And once we get into battle, she gives us basic tapes to record the monster. So yeah, as we said before, we are gonna transform into recorded tapes. So instead of like capturing stuff into Pokeballs or Them cards, we just have to record the monster using our cassette recorder. Logical, of course. The chances of success for recording depends on the species, the health, the damage you deal, the damage you receive, so there is a bit of strategic element you can do to improve your catch rate, but early on it's quite straightforward, but it will get harder along the way. A good reason to record new monsters is because, whoa, am I flying? Yes, I am. Apparently, we get the moth we climbed once you record a Dominoth. And now we can glide when jumping from high altitudes. So yes, capturing some new monsters can give you some unique Sorry. overworld abilities. And these are important to complete world puzzles, arrive at new locations and, you know, widen the exploration area. So if you see new monsters, go catch them. Um, well, record them. And since we've learned how to record, I saw some cute monsters around. And I caught this little pom bomb, which is a cute doggo. I mean, look at him. It's a fire doggo. I love it. Pom bomb aside, we continue to explore because, you know, we're with Kaylee, the ranger, and we're feeling the earthquake and what the F just happens? I'm confused. She's confused. A train station came out of nowhere. A train station. Sure, it's bizarre to us, but it's also bizarre to Kaylee, who's been a resident in Harbortown. 
we head into the train station because if something looks suspicious, obviously go explore that building, nothing wrong ever happens. In the train station, the spirit Morgante appears and is like, it's a bizarre thing, but it's cool, but it's bizarre and freaky. And it kind of approaches on the battle and it's level 100. Although you can see it's a very low health, but it's still level 100. The artifacts don't do much damage. Somehow, Kaylee's like, I am not gonna die today. And through the power of love, or whatever you call survival instinct, Kaylee and I fuse. Yes, so because I'm Pom Pom and she's Serenade, we got Pomnade. And it's a cute doggo with like a microphone tail. With the powerful fusion, we share the moveset, the stats, etc. And we managed to defeat the Archangel, who kind of embodies our spirit in our brain. I don't know exactly what happens, but now we're on a mission to collect like eight songs. Weird. Kaylee sits down at us at a cafe and we talk, we have a chat. We get like a notification, we are level 1 relationship with Kaylee and now we can fuse in battles. Fusion happens based on kind of things, you need a gorge so you can just fuse anytime and fusions can happen between any two monsters so there are around 14,000 possibilities and even the caves we had like the monsters re reverted we could have had like a, a syrup bomb instead of a pomade so even the order matters outside the cafe there's like eugene who's like shouting at what seems like vampires and you know he scares them away he's like protecting our little harbor town and he tells us to go meet him in the outskirts and i'm like okay a guy telling me to go meet him in the outskirts i will do that right away but before I do, I head into the shop because this is where you buy stuff like the basic tapes to record more monsters or healing items like the rewind, which I love because rewind, you rewind the cassette tapes and it's back to, to full HP. Like the branding of things, genius. On our cute little way to Eugene, we see some new monsters that we haven't recorded yet. So I go record them, including traffic crap because who doesn't love a traffic cone? We also take a slight detour because, you know, I'm not good with maps and I end up finding some monsters like Nevermorse and I get pushed by a random trainer, but it's an easy fight so it doesn't matter. I finally make my way to Eugene, who gives me a key to infiltrate strongholds from the top window, which is weird. Why don't you just get a door lock but whatever i mean a door key but yeah it seems that the two creatures that are you know they have a sales pitch and we're like are they not vampires and guess what eugene says they're worse they're estate agents how terrifying i honestly laughed so hard at that line anyways we battle them in a 2v2 and it's a fun experience so let's explain some things what cassette beasts really do well is the elemental advantages or typing. Monsters have one of 14 types. So there is the usual elemental ones like fire, water, earth, and grass. But there's also kind of not common, not uncommon ones like poison, steel, and plastic. And there's also like the wildest type, glitter. Like who thinks of glitter as a monster type, but it is. The cool thing about this game is really how it deals with effective and ineffective type combinations. So in games like Pokemon or Temtem, which you're probably more familiar with, you usually do two times damage or half damage when you have the elemental advantages. In Cassette Beast, you instead apply buffs or debuffs. So let's take an example. Earth effects on poison leaves them buried. So it lowers their speed and it lowers their evasion. On the other hand, a poison effect on earth isn't effective, right? So it leaves them tipped. So the earth creature's tips are now poison tipped and they have contact damage, which is poison type. So when they receive 
or land melee attacks, they will do some extra poison damage. An interesting thing about the buffs and debuffs is when you transform into a different state to a different creature, you will still retain the buffs and debuffs from the original cape. So if you have boosted your attack or you had your speed and evasion lowered down, these buffs and debuffs will remain even if you switch to another tape. That is it for this episode. Next time we'll continue to look for the place where we can become rangers, which you know, sounds fun. And we're gonna look out for more adventure because it seems that Kazette Beast world is much more open world. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and leave in the comments what you like, what you didn't like. I hope you like this new format that I'm doing this video. So any feedback is appreciated because in the end, I want you all to enjoy this game and this video as much as I am enjoying Cassette Beast. I love the game and I can't wait to continue with more. I thank you for watching. Bye bye.